Morning church, morning YouTube, as always good to be in God's house and today we're going to have a special message because obviously we know Thursday is Thanksgiving and what does it say? It says Thanksgiving meaning giving thanks and we're called to do that through our lives. We're called to do that through the way we live and a lot of people will sit down Thursday and do they really give thanks or is it more just a time to socialize and have a meal? But again, anyone that knows the Lord and you're, you're called to have a thankful heart in all things. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to learn. We're going to see what directions God calls us to have a thankful heart, how we examine, how we bring it forth and how we show the world that we love the Lord so much. And that's the most important thing. So we're going to go right into the scripture and it's second Chronicles five, one to three, second Chronicles five, one to three reads. Thus, all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in all the things that David, his father, had dedicated. And the silver and the gold and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of God. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes and the chief fathers of the children of Israel unto Jerusalem. To bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Wherefore, all the men Israelites assembled themselves unto the king of the feast, which was in the seventh month. So when the temple of that Solomon had manufactured, built with many hands and many people that were artisans and, and they did things that were beautiful works that were just unbelievable. So what do they do? They want to dedicate it. They want to dedicate it to the Lord and they want to provide a house, a place that the Ark of the Covenant could rest. So they gather the priests, the elders, the Levites, everyone together, and they want to make it special. They prepared to bring the ark into the temple, the house of the Lord, so his awesome presence could be with Israel. This is important to understand. They built the temple to house the ark, the ark, the significance of wanting, this is the key. They wanted the presence of God Almighty to be with them at all times. So let's go to 2 Chronicles and see how the story turns out. 2 Chronicles 5, 11 to 14. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. And the Levites, which were the singers of them, Asaph, Herman, Jedithum, and with the sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, and stood in the east end of the altar. And with them a hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets. Picture that. And it came even to pass, as the trumpeters were singing, were as one. Remember that. To make one sound to be heard, praising and thanking the Lord. And they lifted up their voice with trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music. And praise the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And then the house which was filled with the cloud, even the house of the Lord. Now I want you to really draw into this next verse 14. So that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. They prepared the temple to bring in the ark and to show how their Lord God Almighty, the thankfulness they had, and they wanted to do it through praise and worship, through songs, through things that would show and, and, and show everyone in the area that they loved the Lord above all things. Their hearts were in unison because they had one purpose, and that was to give God the glory. That is the purpose of this church. That is any church, the true purpose is to give God God the glory in all things. So they built this beautiful, wonderful temple and a place of worship to keep, and they give God the praise through it. The priests and elders, and that's his interest, the priests and elders draw closer to the Lord by opening their hearts to him, saying, we are so thankful. We give you the glory for what you have given us, that we have given you a place to reside with us in this beautiful temple. Okay. 
And it came to pass, I just read this, but I'm going to read it again. And the trumpeters and the singers were as one, and made one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice in the trumpets and cymbals and the instruments of music, they praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And then the house was filled with the cloud, even the house of the Lord. This worship, this is worship at its finest. They were all as one. They were all thanking God for the same purpose. They weren't holding back. They were giving him the glory through what he has done and what he has given them. This is how worship is intended. When many times when men and women come together, they fail to prepare their hearts for the message because they fail to do proper praise and worship. But we need to understand, this does not mean we have a secular rock concert with smoke and mirrors and lights and even body surfing. This is not a place where, where worship takes place in the house of God. That is bringing in the world and leaving it there. We should not do that. But we give God the glory and praise. But we don't wait till Sunday. A lot of people wait many things for Sunday. Well, I'm going to say my prayer on Sunday or I'm going to do this. No, we do it whenever we do it throughout our lives, giving him the glory in all things. But the beauty of it on Sunday, this is significant, is that we praise as the fact we do it with the body of brothers and sisters in Christ, desiring to praise and worship God in unison given him the due he deserves and our heart grows in the process psalm 98 4 reads make a joyful noise unto the lord all the earth make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise the scripture tells us a joyful noise a joyful noise unto the lord make a loud voice and sing and rejoice too many people come out in churches and they think it's but a lip sync contest and they sit there and wait for everyone else to sing. Make it not a joyful noise. Make it not in showing the thankfulness they have in your heart. Knowing that the love he has given us, he is the creator of all things and the promiser of who he is and what he has given us by the way of Jesus Christ. Perhaps you sit there, been there, trust me, I've done this in my past. Sitting there wondering when praise and worship's going to be over. You count the songs, one, two, three, and you're like, man, I can't wait till these songs go, you know, so on and so forth. And that's not what it, what it calls us to do. That is not how we unify as a body of brothers and sisters in Christ. We unify by preparing for the message. We unify by singing praises to the Lord together. Boy, so we make a joyful noise because we have the joy of the Lord in our heart. We have the spirit of the Lord God Almighty residing within, within us. I think people take this too lightly. So what kind of noise do you make? Do you make a joyful noise or do you not make any noise? at something that you have to answer for yourself. And my, my thing to you, if you struggle with it, there's a reason. There's a reason. I believe he or she that sings from their heart is one that has shown how much they love the Lord. Whether it was a bad week, a bad month, a bad morning, whatever it may have been, we show the Lord that we love him, we give him the glory, we praise, so on and so forth. Perhaps today we go from showing the joy in our life and praise and worship, shouting out loud to the Lord, you have given me everything. Why can I not sing praise and glory to you? Psalm 33, 1 to 3 reads, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is commonly for those the upright. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto him in psaltery and in instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him the new song plays skillfully with a loud noise. Loud noise. It doesn't say it's supposed to be quiet. It's supposed to be a loud noise. Do you hear what it says? It says loud noise. Some of us sing as we're afraid to wake the baby sitting next to us. And that's the truth. We sing from our heart, even if we are not skilled singers, which many of us are. But yet we do it out of our heart. The Lord loves nothing more than when a man opens his heart or a woman and they sing out of their heart because of much they love him. 
Psalm 107, 1 to 6 reads, I'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Who is hath redeemed from the hand of thy enemy, and gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south? They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from all their distresses. How do we show thanks to what we have been given in the ways of he provides for our needs? I believe this is an area many people, even those that claim in Christ, confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, to struggle to understand. The Israelites many times were in great need, but many times they did not go to him out of, you know, maybe their pride or something else, and they didn't go and say, hey, look, show me the direction. Give me what I, we, we are trusting you and relying. A lot of people try to rely upon themselves instead of relying upon the whole Lord in all things. But yet the ignorance of man, rather than call out and trust and believe that God can provide for anything, we are in need. Need. Very important. It doesn't say wants. It says needs. Let me stop. A lot of people pray for all the wrong things. What we're called to do is if it's for God's will and God's glory, it says he will provide. But let's talk about this for a second. He does provide for all the needs of believers that we will be physically strong by obtaining the nourishment we need to feed our body. To the roof of our head that gives us the things that we, you know, we don't have to worry about the roof leaking or, or waking up, so on and so forth. But a lot of people think it's all about the wants and not the needs. Yet many think the mansion on the hill or the Bentley in the driveway or the bling that weighs the man down is what he will provide. Well, I'm here to tell you, I will not preach that because that is the prosperity gospel. We are called, we've been given more than the truth and through the gospel, we've been given the gift of life. I believe some struggle to come to terms with God or angrily with them because they struggle to have their needs met. Think about this for a second. You might have been in this walk at one time. Many times a man, man or woman may struggle to pay the bills and put food on a table. Yet, here's where it's going to get difficult. Many times they have money to put in the poker machine. Many times they have the ability to spend money on alcohol or cigarettes or things that go into the presence of the Holy Spirit. We're called not to pollute the temple with things that are of no good. God will not provide. I'm here to tell you. He will not provide for those things. He's only going to provide for those things that will improve our walk and continue to improve our temple. 2 Thessalonians 3.10 reads, For even when we were with you, this we commanded, that if we should not work, neither should he eat. Oh, man, this is, this is heavy stuff. It appears we live in a country that has gotten so soft, everyone expects handouts desire not to work, but yet they should have all their needs met. He calls man to work with his hands. He calls man to make a living in doing so, giving God the glory that he has a job. Now, for all you that still work, this is important. It also means that the believer that has a job is to do it in excellence, that we are called to excel in the job we do, showing our management, our boss, whatever it may be, that we are giving God the glory through the job we have, not being a complainer or a time stealer. Do we understand that God has given you everything? It might not be the mansion, it might not be the $200,000 car, but we have been given more than any other country. I want you to step back and think about this. We can wake up in, in the warmth of heat in the winter and, and coolness in the summer with air conditioning. We don't wake up with dirt floors or worrying about hostiles. I've heard stories of this. Hostiles coming through the doors and, and just taking havoc, taking the children to make them slaves, abusing the wife and eventually killing the husband. We don't worry about that stuff. But 
we that live in the United States are far more blessed than we should be, yet many struggle in our country to be thankful for what the Lord has given. Are you truly thankful to what God has given you? Perhaps you don't know him, so it's hard to give thanks if a person truly don't know him. It took me years, and listen to this, I'm gonna put it in perspective, and I've heard this many times. It took me many years prior to knowing the Lord that I now pay for things that I did prior to knowing the Lord, result of injuries or health issues, so on and so forth, because I live for myself and not for the Lord. So who am I to blame for my struggles right now? Never shall I blame the Lord for the way I lived prior to coming and trusting him as my savior. But many people do. They blame him for all the problems they created. They happen over time and they don't happen overnight. But I give him, and I pray you do this, I give him praise and glory to the life he has given me. And that's what we're called to do in all things. Is your heart thankful of what you have been given or do you still struggle? It will and does show our walk. The man that truly seeks the ways of the Lord soon finds out how blessed he, blessed he really is. And he deserved nothing, but God has given him anything, especially in the way of eternal life. I'm here to tell you, it doesn't get any better than that. We show God our thankful heart by what he has given us, by the way we live. And we handle our finances in a way we give generously to those in need, whether it be someone in need, someone to the house of God, whatever it is. But the key is when, when man gives to the house of God, the house of God got to be one that uses their, their money properly, that their good stores for God. They're using it for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. A lot of people, they think it's about putting the marble down on the floor and the gold in the bathroom, and that is not. That is the wickedness of the world. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 8. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 8 reads, but I say, he that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he has purposed in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth, this is the key, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. I never preach on giving. I'm here to tell you why. A lot of churches preach on giving, and, and so many times it becomes their focal point. Give, 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 give till it hurts. Give, you know, we need this, we need that. No, I'm not going to take anything from the glory of God and what his son Jesus Christ has Given. The key to a man or woman that truly loves the Lord, they will desire to give willingly out of love for God. It should be a fight. It shouldn't be a wrestle. You need to examine your heart and allow your heart to do it because you're doing it because what God has given you. But yet we know many fail to come to Christ because there's a difference between 12 and 14 inches. That's from here to here. Many people never come to the truth of Jesus Christ because they cannot allow their heart to be to comprehend the love he has given them. Same goes for many a man. They struggle between here and here, meaning where their wallet is. They struggle to give the God the glory because their wallet's so tightly against their butt it cannot be released. Wow, God is so good. All right. But we also understand that a thankful heart, or one that loves the Lord, will show it by how they give to the church, to the people that are in need, you know, maybe it's some special cause, you know, it's a beautiful cause. I see people open their wallets and hearts to those in North Carolina, it's a beautiful thing. You know, maybe they normally didn't do something like that, but the Lord stirred their heart and they gave and it was a beautiful thing. People wonder why they struggle their walk, struggle to, struggle to live the walk you're called to live. A lot of times it's because of how they handle their pocketbook. Just like the rich young ruler that found everything. And when Jesus talked to him, he said, and he said, I, I, I do all these things. I follow all the commandments. I'm a good man. Good man. Okay. I'm a good man. 
And then he says, okay, so far so good. Celebrate all the possessions you have and give to the needy. He had plenty, so he could not give to the needy. So he walked away knowing that the kingdom of God would not happen in his life. So my dear friends sitting here today, watching, is your, is your thankfulness in the way of how you handle your money? I can't, I have to answer for one person and that's the one speaking right now. I've seen some believers give to what hurts and I've seen them open or do things and, and just out of love for others. And they've grown in the process and it was a beautiful transformation, but we never do it. This is where we, again, this is where a lot of people and Christians struggle. We never do it for man's approval. If we do it for man's approval, guess what? We already got our just reward. We got a recognition from man. I'm here to tell you, we don't want recognition from man because that's prideful. We want recognition from God, period. Game, set, match. When we give from the heart, we show the Lord we are trusting him with our money. Do you trust your Lord? Do you trust God with your money? Do you trust him? We trust more than money. We're not investing in this world. We're investing in our future. Praise God for his goodness and his mercy. First Peter 1, 3 to 5 reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, abundant mercy, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that's incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Do you have a thankful heart and life, knowing what God has given you, especially the promise and assurance of eternity with the Lord. The believer is given something far more priceless than any man in this world can give. I'm here to tell you that. What is the price of a man? So I throw this out all the time. Can it be bought? Can it be haggled for? Can the price come down? Can it go up? I think not yet. Many sell their soul for a very low price to obtain what the things of the world has to offer. Yet the true believer understands what he has been given in a way of salvation, the promise of eternal life. Now here's, I'm gonna throw this out. Today, do you truly understand what you have been given? If you say yes, you are living in the way that shows God and all that you are thankful and blessed beyond all things. Do you realize how blessed you really are? I think a lot of people struggle that. Well, you don't understand, I'm dealing with this, I'm dealing. Are you blessed beyond all things? Romans 5, 9 reads, Much more than now being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. We are saved through the wrath through him. We are saved from God's wrath through our faith to believe and trust in Jesus Christ. Right there in itself realizes how blessed we are. There are many people that will faith face God's wrath. Maybe in this slight lifetime or when they go before the great white throne. Justification, as we know, is the act whereby our legal stand in heaven is changed and we are declared righteous. Wow, that's good stuff. When we express that we have faith in God, he adds righteousness and perfection to our record. Nothing we did, I tell you this all the time, nothing I did, nothing you did can make you worthy of the inheritance of the kingdom, but only what Jesus Christ did. And then we confess and believe what he has given us. Colossians 1, 10 to 14 reads, that ye might walk, there it is. I don't make this stuff up. That you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. We should stop there. I can preach this for a month. Fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Saints in light, remember that who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us, us, us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Verse 12 says, give thanks 
unto the Father because we have been given an inheritance that's unperishable, as we know, no rust, no moth, no man, no nothing, no taxes, no nothing can get at it because it is promised by God. And when, as we know, when something's promised by God, it always comes to fruition. This is where it should be so evident in a man or woman that truly knows the Lord by what they've been given in this life. Now I think about this uh, very deep. Most people don't understand the depth I am in my walk and what, I, what the Lord puts on me. But a lot of people don't understand it says the saints of the light. And I want to talk about that. When, when I die, when you die, for our faith to believe in Jesus Christ and their trust in him, we are promised to be in the presence of Christ. Those that know not the Lord go to a priceless eternity. Pretty simple. It's one or the other. There's only two choices. There's no third. All right. So all saints of the light. I think about this and I'm thinking, don't be a time for my faith to know the Lord. That I will come and not only come into the wonderful presence of my Savior Jesus Christ, but also come into those that gave far more up than I did than you did for the kingdom for Jesus Christ. Men like Peter, men like Paul, men like men like you know uh, King Solomon and, and King David, women like Mary Magdalene who was deserved the, the penalty of her sins, but yet she became an awesome woman that loved the Lord above all things. Does your life reflect faithfulness of what God through his son, Jesus Christ, has given you? Does it radiate? Does it radiate with love? The hope of assurance of all things knowing in this life can be, nothing in this life can be separate. We cannot be separate from the love of the Lord and the promise that he will always be by our side. He delivered me, he delivered you from the walk that we once lived in darkness for the world to please the body, to please the flesh. You got to make it real. And, and I think of those things that, that I did that brought me temporary joy, usually with long-term heartaches, I'm here to tell you, and the pleasure, but never led to the promise of eternal life. Then once we are enlightened, we are enlightened by the word of God, we are enlightened through the Holy Spirit, we are enlightened by the presence of Jesus Christ, we no longer seek those things we once seek. We see that those things were dark, that they brought temporary pleasure. I repeat that many times. You know how many people ruin their life over temporary pleasure? You know how many marriages are ruined by temporary pleasure? Too many, because they think of the moment, they don't think about their future. All right. And it leads them on the path of unrighteousness, which will lead to the path of hell. But we, brother and sister in Christ, if we have our feet firmly planted, on the ground for the righteousness what we have been given through Jesus Christ, the promise of everlasting life with our Savior and Lord Jesus. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, and being fruitful in every good work and increase in the knowledge of God. Increase in the knowledge of God. I'm here to tell you that is what draws us in. That is what makes the relationship much more intimate. How do you have a relationship that's more intimate and closer and he examines your life than if you're not gaining knowledge? It don't work. The math isn't there. It is like a man that goes in a raft. You see it, you see these ships sink or a plane crashes and then these little rafts and the man's in the raft and he's hoping a big ship will go by or the beacon is seen and he's tossed to and fro because the raft has no dominion over the waves, so he's all over. That's a lot of people, but they don't have their faith in order or their trust in Jesus Christ. But we have feet firmly planted on the holy ground. How did the holy ground become? Because Jesus' blood dripped from the cross onto the ground to make anything that comes into his presence and trust him, they too will be made acceptable before God. We are, no, we are so thankful that we no longer have our prayers unheard. People call out to God and pray for things and wonder why they're never answered. Well, I'm here to tell you why. Because they never had faith in him. How can you call and pray upon someone and have no faith and expect your prayers to be answered? It don't work again. The math, it's, not, it's not humanly possible. 
It's not godly possible because he will not hear them. If you don't believe me, not John 9, 31 reads. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God, he doeth his will. Doeth, doeth his will. Him he heareth. I love that. What are you thankful for? For you, the man or woman that claims to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. And I'm going to throw it out right now. If you have a heart that is not thankful, you need to pray about it. There's a lot of people that claim they're, they're walking to walk with Jesus Christ, but there ain't one shred of thanksgiving in their heart. And then I challenge them, and it, were they truly enlightened by the truth of who they are in Jesus Christ? Maybe it's time that that man or that woman calls upon the Lord and says, you know what, I am struggling here. That's where it starts when we realize, I do this all the time. When I'm struggling with something, I gotta seek it and say, man, I'm really struggling here. Show me, show me what you want me to see. Romans 7, 22 to 25 reads, For I delight in the law of the Lord after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched, I love this, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with this mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. We will finish this message on what it is to have a thankful heart. The spirit for the Lord which he has given us. We thank God knowing nothing ever comes good out of our flesh. That's the truth. And our sinful nature. And we claim to follow it. We can claim to follow the law and obey the Ten Commandments like a lot of people do. But none of these things, as we know, will ever make us, make us holy and presentable before the Lord. We thank God with our lives and with our being. What does that mean? That you're not holding back. A lot of people hold back. You know, if it's something we're really passionate about, we're not called to hold back. And I challenge you to be passionate more and more about the Lord. And you don't hold back then. A lot of people hold back. What are we holding back for when we get older? Well, most of us are there. So what are we holding back for? Can't answer that. I got to speak for this guy. All right. Today, how thankful are you? Is it so much your, it's evident throughout your day, throughout your life? Not by words. A lot of people say they're thankful by words, but they don't show it by the evidence of works through the presence and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I'm not talking works that give you salvation. We know that's not the truth, but works come after salvation. The fruit of the Spirit changes our way and how we look at things and how we draw to people and how we love people and how we want people to know. And this is the key why I preach. I want people to, to experience some of the experiences that I experience. There's nothing more precious than to draw and just be a closeness and, and a wonderfulness of what he has given. It's open for everyone, no matter how bad your past was, because I guarantee you, my past is worse. I'm thankful that God has allowed me the privilege and honor to preach the word of God, to teach those that come out and hear the truth to be used as an instrument, an instrument for his kingdom. I pray, I hope, this is key. I never take my call it lightly. And if I do, then I'm done. But I always have a thankfulness in my heart for what God has allowed me to be used for his glory. We need to be thankful, sing and praise and glory to him. What he has given us in the way of our life. Life now. Life with our finances. Life with family and friends. Life by eternal life what he has given us through Jesus Christ. All right. We need to be thankful that God accepted his precious son for the sacrifice of my sin and yours, that we would never have been granted access to God the Father, but we have been granted access to God the Father by the precious blood of his son, Jesus Christ. We need to be thankful that we were redeemed, we were purchased for a price, that the blood of Christ on the cross paid my debts and yours in full. There's no balance. There's no, oh, I still have this outstanding debt. I got to continue to pay. I have to work for it, so and so forth. That's not worth it. He did it all once, game, set, match. We need to be thankful that even through our physical or material struggles, it don't stop there. How about our mental struggles? How about our spiritual struggles? 
that our Lord promises never to leave nor forsake us, to walk by our side even when we were approaching the valley of the shadow of death. Jesus didn't say, I'm leaving you here. A lot of people think that you go there and that's it, he deserts you. He is one of the only people that will never desert you. Men will desert you. Your family will desert you. Your family, your friends will desert you. But the Lord will never leave nor forsake you. Praise God for his goodness and mercy. Amen. We need to be thankful knowing that no matter what happens in this life, and this is where I'm at right now, that if we go to nuclear war, I'm telling you friends, we're close. Keep sending missiles over to Ukraine and Russia and you watch what happens soon enough. I'm not here to preach war. I hate war. I think it's stupid, but it's man's prideful way of trying to gain stuff. Unrest in our country. You think there's going to be unrest in our country? Well, I'm here to tell you, unless you just came from under that rock, there already is. Tribulations. We all go through them. How about our family and friends deserting us because of our faith? I'm here to tell you, a lot of times, the closer you walk with the Lord, the more distant your family and friends will become. Trust me, I can explain. All right. That we have the assurance that we will be in his presence of the Lord forever in all eternity. Brothers and sisters, that's how we look at things. We look towards the future. If you look what's going on right now, it's not good. You'll have anxiety about stress. You'll be like, what is going on now? But we look towards the future of what we are going to be promised. Promised in his presence. And eventually we get, when everything comes to fruition, we get our glorious body. Just think how awesome that is. And then you see, I'm just, I, it just gets me excited. I see Paul walking down and I'll be like, man, this is the man that I just loved. The thankful heart is one that living to please the Lord and loving to show the Lord. So how are you living and loving it in such a way? I pray you are. What's the prayer? We love you, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for who you are. We pray that our thankfulness abounds more and more. Too many times we hold it back. People don't even see it in us because we struggle to present it. But we pray that we are thankful. We're thankful even on our bad days because it's showing we have the trust and the glory to, to trust you in all things, to rely on you in all things. Too many people, when bad news comes, they run the other way. But you run with us, Lord. And Lord, we just come before you and we thank you. And I pray, if anyone's struggling here, anyone's struggling watching, first to come and know and trust you completely, I pray that we cry out to you. You welcome anyone. All they have to do is open the door when you're knocking upon their heart. Lord. And Lord, I pray for any, anyone that is struggling with, with thankful heart, with thanksgiving and all things, Lord. I pray that we would have the ability and a desire to give thanks in all things. We love you, Lord. We give you the glory and everything in Jesus' name. Amen.